We're moving into our first major conversation for today, and that is youth involvement in politics. The Saturday elections uh, that took place uh, here in Lagos and Ogun State showed a lot with regards the involvement of young people and involvement of Nigerians generally in the electoral process. How can we get more um, uh, young Nigerians to get involved in politics? How can we get more Nigerians to be interested in the whole electoral process and the political space? This morning we are speaking with um, Okwe Emi Orinowo, who's joining us via Zoom. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. Um, I'm going to start with, of course, referring to the Saturday elections in Lagos and um, Ogun State. You know, one of the things that was noticed, they said it was marred with voter apathy. Um, the numbers were embarrassing um, with regards to local government election. The go Lagos State governor even mentioned um, that, you know, voter apathy was one of the things that, you know, he noticed not very many people showed up. And if you look at Nigeria's young population, there's millions and millions and millions of people who should, you know, show up when you hear of elections, when you hear of getting registered, when you even hear of participating, you know, in, in uh, Nigeria's political space. But we don't see that. What would you say might be the major reason why? Right. Uh, so from where I'm, I'm, I'm sitting, I think one of the concerns around youth apathy as well as this last election is concerned is, you know, people first realizing how much of a disconnect or how much of a no difference you make in their lives at that level. You know, it shows how much, you know, one, how the powers of the local government have been whittled down over time, how the state government have been sure that arm of government has not been dependent over a long period of time. And it's just been hard for people to connect to see how, um, there will be any much difference in terms of, you know, now having the local government election. Quite frankly, for a lot of times, the reason why the local government election is even done by those state governors are because they be, it's like a mobilization tool and to, you know, kickbacks to people who supported them at, you know, at the time they were doing that by interior elections. If you see, I mean, look at uh, what happened in, 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 um, in Ogun State, even like that for Shun State, because we have elections coming up for gubernatorial, to the essence of all that local government appointed, either caretaker or elective, as the case may be, quote and unquote, yes. it's just as a way of, you know, holding the base together. So it, there's been a huge disconnect. Without a doubt, you know, there's been an awakening. You know, young people, if we see what has happened with the not young to run bill, with the NSAS movement, there is definitely an awakening. But people are not, people don't want tokenistic change, they want real change. You know, so the, the, the turnout right now for local government elections, people already cannot see how much of a difference it will make in their lives. So it has affected that uh, participation at that level. The reality of it is that if you look at Lagos State and, and Ogun State, actually young people are the ones, the majority of them are actually young people. You know, but the very much establishment people who are not much, you know, there's not like, it's not an issue based, it's not they're standing for an agenda or there's a new manifesto they're presenting to the table to totally transform Nigeria. It's more of a consolidation or a validation of the executive to say, oh, yes, uh, uh, Governor Stonwolu or Governor Dakwabiodo is doing his job, so we just want to endorse it. There's nobody articulating a clear course to rally people around. So that, that's, that's, that's what I believe is responsible for that apathy that we're witnessing. Oh, well, there's also, you know, the perspective that a lot of young Nigerians don't really feel the effect of governance. And so they may not be able to see the relevance of going to, you know, participate or to vote. Um, do, do you agree with that? Because it's one of the things that I, I mentioned uh, uh, to uh, the PDP spokesperson here in Lagos um, in, in an interview on Saturday, that one of the reasons, you know, why a lot of people may not be bothered about local government elections is because they don't even see what the local government does for them. Um, so, so is that disconnect also one of the problems? Absolutely. So I try to adduce to that. There is a general broad disconnect around governance, but I think it has been, it's been better over time. I think one of the things we've struggled with at the, within the youth development, youth advocacy, youth participation, or inclusion, inclusion space, is the ability to see how every decision of government affects your day-to-day -day living. You know, so the more you see how, okay, if you have a good government in place, it directly affects your access to hospitals, the access to jobs and empowerment for a very long time. So that is disconnect. But that has changed over time. We've seen events right now that have played up to see how, for example, the NSAS movement was a clear case of literally bringing the government to, its, to a point of, of negotiation. We've seen the potential powers of that. 
But at the level of the local government, we, it's obvious. Now, people can definitely see that, okay, what exactly is going on? The selection process itself, with all of the news that came out around somebody emerging as a candidate, and afterwards the party will sit down and say, no, it's not your time yet, and give the ticket to another person. So people just see it as a, you know, as a charade of the incumbent power to just, you know, consolidate powers, and not much delivering on any new change. Is anybody going to come out and say, I'm going to do something different from what the state governor is doing? Is anybody come out to say that? So it's not, and you look at what has happened again in terms of the results. It's a winner takes all. You see a situation where the ruling party is the one that you know takes all the. It shows the level of conversation and the and the, and the variety of the contest. It's not the contest as the case may be. So people have just given up to say that when it's time to reach and perhaps at the at the junction of of you know gubernatorial presidential, that's what we make. And it's unfortunate. It also speaks to how much local government has been killed. You know, the state government, I mean, there's a, there's a broad conversation at the federal level, even around people who are advocating for restructuring, around recognizing local government as a third type of government. A whole lot of the proponents of that right now are really recognizing two types of government, which is the federal and the state, and that they see local government as not as independent as it should be. So these are ongoing conversations, and I'm not surprised that it has cascaded down to voter apathy as far as local government election is concerned. We still don't have clarity on what exactly do we expect. Are they an independent arm of government? That's not that's not been the case. Okay, so 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 where do you think the change should come from? Because like you mentioned, there's a lot of young faces that you see now contesting, uh, but you know there's still a, a level of you know distrust you know with these people mm. because you know like you mentioned, it, it is possible that they're only just being thrown in there you know to fill in you know uh, spaces and to you know make it look like a particular state has young people in governance, not necessarily because they you know believed in the process or believed in you know in governance and they're going there to effect any change. Um, so where do you think, you know, the change should come from? Should there be more interest? Should we see more university graduates, bankers, um, you know, doctors, you know, everybody um, believe, you know, that they have something that they can know, some way that they can affect change and go out there and contest? Absolutely, absolutely. So personally, as a rule of thumb, I believe that we need more professionals in politics, not more professional politicians. Right? We believe that you must both have, you must first have created value somewhere that you want to bring into politics, unlike what we have, uh, I mean, rampant right now nowadays. So, in terms of also young people, we're not saying young people should get into office just for the sake of the fact that they are young. No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying right now is this is that we want it a generation right now. We have a generation right now, we are a product of the status quo. We understand the challenges better. And are better wired to the nuances of today's governance. They know where the shoe pinch is. They are more globally connected. And the kind of ideas required to move this nation forward is more represented, more depository, you know, in the younger demography than in the older one. So it's issue based. And we also want young people right now who understand the nuances of governance. Who understand who uh, you know understand what are our challenges? What are the co challenges around constitutional the constitution that we presently run? It has to be based on an agenda, not just on the fact that, okay, you are younger, you belong to a certain demography of 35 and under, or 30 as number as the case may be, and that's why you want to run for office. It's, it's not a special contest. You, know? you just don't want people that look young to be in office. So we just believe that, so for me, it has to be, what is the agenda? What are we putting forward? We have to ultimately be issue this. If not, we end up just having a replacement of the old guy, which is what we are saying. So we have young people going into the place. The recruitment process that brought them in is the same that was put in place by these same people we are trying to replace. So they are not going to they are not going in to change anything or have new ideas they are presenting. Rather, they are going in the right to reinforce the status quo. It is difficult to, to change something when you rode on that same uh, um, course to get to power. Yeah. So but, but isn't isn't that a challenge? Yes. Uh, and isn't that one of the things that scares people from getting involved because they you know already believe that the system wouldn't accept you if you're not the chosen one if you're not the one that the godfather or the governor or the traditional ruler has chosen to fill that position then you're not going to you're not going to get in there so how can we how can we change that how can a a kunle you know who has you know been a doctor for the last you know couple of years and believes in his local government wants to effect change how can he believe in you know, his, you know, political party and understand that if he's able to generate enough popularity amongst, you know, his peers and among the society, he will win, you know, instead of waiting to be anointed by a godfather. Right. So um, it's, 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 it's not as easy, you know. Uh, there's a popular saying now, it has become very rampant, that power is not served a la carte, right? 
So there's a need right now to get your numbers right. Fourth, I said create value. If there's anything that we've seen over time, is that it's a power for young people to organize, for us to organize ourselves. At the end of the day, politics is a game of numbers, right? You must have the numbers. You must have a clear cut agenda that brings people together. Secondly, we cannot underplay the value that money plays in politics. The idea of how the Godfathers have adjusted the party is an open secret. It is through resources. Some sort of people right now, maybe through wealth, maybe through stealing through corruption, they're able to amass wealth, spawn the political party, and as such, they become political uh, uh, leaders or Godfathers, as the case may be. Look at what NSAS movement has done. Look at the amount of resources that was mobilized. We've seen templates of what is possible. So that idea has been ignited that it is actually possible for us to do this thing. What we now need to do is that how do we now make sure that we strategically pull those resources together to advance an agenda? It's, 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 a, it's a relay, it's not an 100 meter race, you know? And what we need to presently begin to do now is we don't have to fall into the old uh, bad of political party. Um, we, we can decide to do that. At the end of the day, it brought down to numbers and not taking our resources in there. But nothing will happen if we don't take action bring ourselves together across board, across the north. So some of the challenges we've also, we've also had over time, is this dichotomy around north and south. And we also see soil play out during the NSAS movement, where, you know, it, it, we in the south seem to be very, you know, boisterous, we're more, you know, progressive in ideals, while they're not a bit conservative. You know, so, and it's easier, perhaps, I mean, I would say, I mean, I'm not trying to be politically correct, that it's easier right now to easily put them in line than it is us in the south. And we see it play out over time. So how do we ensure that our brothers in the north we carry them along and make these things about issues? It's not about where you're from. It's not about being in the north or the south. It's fundamentally about unemployment is worse here and it's also terrible there. You know, so having that avenue for continuous dialogue and also seeing amongst ourselves, you know, as at the time the young to young to run bill was passed, some of the things some of us were advocating for at the time was how quickly can we get some of our us empowered? How quickly right now do we want to have young entrepreneurs? Because we need resources. The money has to come. Whoever pays the paper controls the tone, you know? So we need to see how we can mobilize our own resources, put, bring ourselves together. If we're not infiltrating the existing political structures, how are we building our own? You know, and we've had about two years now to build 2023, still some years away. So a lot of work still has to be done, and we have to be very realistic about what needs to be done. It's not a, it's not a two party, you know, and it's not going to be sad to us. So, so that's, that's my take on that, really. Okay, and, and, and what would you advise a young, you know, male, female Nigerian who wants to get into that office? You know, it doesn't have to be a governorship office. It could be councillorship, it could be local government chairman, it could be the State House of Assembly. Um, but wants to get into that position to, you know, do what he can to ensure that, you know, uh, things are better for his people. He doesn't have any godfathers, but he has a plan. What would you advise that person? What steps would you say that, you know, he or she um, should take? So, for, for, first thing I would say is that I think it's important for us to understand the issues. You know, I believe that whatever wants to move someone to change, you cannot, you cannot solve a problem you don't understand, right? Yeah. So, a lot of times when I engage young people, when we talk, it's, it's really about, okay, so what's the plan? What exactly do you want to do differently? You really have to be rooted in the challenges that Nigeria has. Secondly, you need to find like minds. You need to invest in networking. What are the other people who are thinking like you? I've always said right now that in a room of 10 people, you are the smartest. When push comes to shove, you are the one who will go out first. So how well do you recruit people to begin to think the way you are thinking? These are starting points. Then secondly, you want to look at the political space. You need to do an audit of the political space. Where do you fit in? What are the existing, you know, do a SWOT analysis, do a festival analysis, see how well you realistically fit in and how you want to bring people together. Because at the end of the day, it falls down to influence. If you cannot influence every day vocality, what, 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 you know, what, what, what can you do? Oh, it seems you lost power over there, uh, but we would uh, yes, agree this. Yes. The same <laughs> okay, I, I, I want to I wanna also quickly mention something that I shared uh, over the weekend, and that was um, on a different platform. I was saying that, you know, a lot of Nigerians um, don't seem to care, you know, and, you know, the, the NSAS protest, yes, you know, it did show, you know, uh, that uh, young Nigerians are energetic and they know what they want and they will fight for what they want um, here and there. But, you know, when it comes to actually being a part of the process, a lot of them don't care. And if you walk around, you know, your environment now, speak to the next 30 people and ask them who their local government chairman is or ask them who their representatives in the National Assembly uh, are, they, 
I'm sure a good, you know, 20 out of 30 wouldn't know these, these, these people. They don't know. They don't bother to know. And it's the mm -hmm. same thing that plays out when it comes to registering for um, um, uh, your voter's card and getting involved you know, with the elections and voting. So what, what do you feel must change? Um, what do you think will be big enough to um, encourage young Nigerians to know these things, to, to want to be a part of the process? So I, I feel like sometimes we have a very um, short memory and, you know, understanding of the theory of change about, you know, how, what, what, what the kind of ripple effect of actions that need to take place for change to happen. I think that generally has been lost on us. You know, we, we've not been able as a collective to see that input and output process, you know. So as that happened, oh, we'll be able to get what we have and everybody went back to status quo, you know. Yes, the, the struggle of daily living comes into play and speaks to the apathy. So there's a need right now for some of us, you know. So at the end of the day, the majority of people, there still has to be some kind of people being intentional about explaining, mobilizing, and informing people to see how, oh, elections in 2023. But the real players, if you look at the voting pattern as the, as the case may be, the, the e-portal that was released by INEC, Look at the numbers of registration. You see some interesting numbers. Now, you look at Australia, they have 250, over 200,000 registered voters. That's the highest. The only reason why that is happening is that I already suspect that some, some engineering is going on there. Some false engineering is going on there by the political parties because their election is closed. You know? So you can already see that. See, the politicians right now, or as the case, the status quo, they are one step ahead. They know this game. But that's the only thing they know. So only if we understand how they are playing it, that is the only way right now we can beat them at that game. So we cannot afford right now to play the ostrich and not be rooted in the understanding of exactly what is going on and what needs to be done. And I believe in that information process, we need to continuously educate ourselves in the reality, not on the theories of politics and of governance, but be rooted in our realities. And the number one reality is even that the disconnect amongst us as young people, we're not the same thing. The level of enlightenment is not the same. So how are we able to carry our, our folks around, our, our folks along, you know, are we able to break down this communication in simple languages to say, okay, this is exactly what the problem is. This is what we need to do. This is the games they've been playing on us. You know, so those are the issues. And I do not totally believe also that it's a case of us against them. I believe that amongst the older generation also, there are people right now who are rooted in the issues. You know, so I believe that we also should seek partnership across, I mean, intergenerational partnerships. Because at the end of the day, it is Nigeria we're trying to save. So th th those are my thought process. We need to be strategic about this, organized. You know, the organization, we've done a whole lot of organizations over the last couple of years. Now it's time to come together and build networks, you know, that will ultimately transform to, to the kind of change we want to see. I'm going to use the Oshun State example that you just put out. You know, you, you mentioned that there has, there's, you know, some catalyst, there's some engineering that happens or that mm -hmm. has happened in Oshun State that has led to, you know, that number of registered voters. Um, you know, would you say that, you know, we also need, uh, you know, some catalysts across the country? There has to be some specific persons who, you know, are able to, you know, engineer, you know, more young people um, to understand the need to get involved in the process and get registered. Um, there's also a trust deficit because I remember from 2014, mm -hmm. there's persons who, you know, were part of that process that today would not be bold enough to speak in politics or in political spaces among young Nigerians because they've, they've lost, you know, some level of trust, um, you know, uh, with, uh, you know, the Nigerian populace. Um, so what kind of engineering would you recommend that needs to start to happen? Um, do you think that there needs to be leaders in different spheres here and there that should be able to pull people together and, you know, get young people to, you know, get, get involved? Absolutely, absolutely. So, interestingly, there is uh, a project right now that we are working on at our end to see how we want to create a network of civil society organizations. Now, so already we have some of them doing in different pockets. In Abuja here, you have some organizations actually taking maybe laptops in their offices and going to rural communities to actually run a help you register. You know, let's view the database where you get you a form and things like that. And so we, using the same similar model, we're actually building a coalition across this. First and foremost, to even address the disparity. If you look at the North and the South, in terms of voter registration, they are more involved over there. You know, that participation is higher on the North and side. So we want to see how well to also bring the South to the same level of awareness and participation. We should do less of the talking and talking, talking about things being bad. Now it's time for action. Let us even get registered. So I agree with you. We need influencers, we need people right now who take, especially existing CSOs and concerned citizens. And the model we're trying to run is to open it out to say, 
you know, we, we saw how people were involved in the NSAS movement and the resources of both small, old, and people coming together and chipping in to make things happen. So we want to run a similar model. If we're able to do it transparently and people can see directly the value that you're able to put on the table, people will connect. And through that, we want to see how well, can we increase? Can we directly, you know, increase the voter registration to up to 2 million? We say, okay, because of this, our efforts right now, we've had up to 2 to 3 million right now people register. That will be a major success story. And the beginning of that building block towards that change we want to see. Because it will not just surprisingly happen in 2023. We need to begin to build it, you know, from now. So I agree that that's, that's definitely a way to go to, to ensure that, you know, we see that desired outcome. The um, uh, NIN process uh, got, um, you know, millions of Nigerians, um, you know, to get registered and, of course, uh, to connect their NIN to their SIM cards. Um, but that was, you know, it seemed like it had to be done, you know, a specific way by the, you know, federal government to get that done. Because, of course, you know the normal Nigerian attitude to some of these things. You know, they'll leave it till next week or maybe next month and, you know, probably never get to do it. Um, you know, major telecommunication brands, um, you know, uh, TV brands, whatever, you know, and, and the likes, also mm -hmm. run certain types of campaigns every now and then to get people to register on their platforms. How possible can we, you know, do that, you know, with regards registering for voting? Is there campaigns that can be thought of that should be able to get young Nigerians to get registered. The same way they will register on a platform because someone is going to give 10,000 naira, 5,000 naira, you know, on, you know, social media platform. Um, can we do, you know, engineer something like that to get more Nigerians? You said 2 million. We should be able to get, a, you know, a good 15 million Nigerians registered, 20 million Nigerians registered, um, you know, on, on these platforms. Or well, registered Absolutely. to vote, rather. Absolutely. So I said that from... The, the silo of our own organization. To yeah. say, okay, a uh, group of friends, let's come together. Now, the, the ideal, or what would be the super story, is a situation where such an idea right now catches fire. And we have pockets across the country of people doing similar models right now, a 1 million, a 500,000, is that. So at the end of the day, it's also important right now for the movement, especially, let me, let me call it voter registration movement, to, not be, to be seen as apolitical. It's yeah. not to further a particular political agenda of PDP or APC as the case may be. So to make it issue-based, we're not telling you to come and register because we want to tell you who, you who to vote for. But hopefully what we want to do is build a database that would now channel, be, be a channel by which we now enlighten people about what the issues are. So I agree with you that it has to be that. And it's unfortunate, INEC has a mandate to actually sensitize the public. But the reality right now is that INEC, as far as that is concerned, do not have the required resources to do it in a kind of way in which you know, would be significantly impactful. So it's important right now for well-meaning citizens, you know, who just believe that, okay, this actually is a collective rescue mission. We have to collectively deep dive into it to pick up that initiative to say, how do we want to support the drive that INEC is doing? You know, how do we want to break down the communication? At the end of the day, we're not a homogeneous entity where, you know, uh, uh, where you can use one English language right now to communicate to everybody. You need to find out people, you know, in their localities, speak all the languages that exist across the country, and through that, all plug into a grid about the new Nigeria. We start with first understanding what the issues are. In fact, it should be a case of let's even if anyone is not talking about the faultiness of our constitution, how our constitution perhaps is the greatest problem that we have. We don't even want to listen to you. You should even be on the platform running for president. So we want to make it issue based, move away from all of that sectionality, it would be not the zone to the north and the south, to now focusing on the issues. You know, so what are you standing for exactly? What are you going to do? What are we going to hold you accountable for for the first hundred days? You know, want to beyond, move beyond those, move towards those rhetorics, you know. And I believe the media also has a significant role to play. I think the media is trying, but I think there's still so much the media has to play, you know, because the media is actually that platform, you know, where people are educated, where people get to know exactly what the issues are. So I think those kind of partnerships will also go a long way in, you know, sensitizing people. Um, okay, I mean, there's, you know, ideas, you know, and, and there are so many ideas, you know, that can work, you know, and I, you know, I appreciate the work that you're also doing. Um, we have um, uh, these um, um, money, uh, how do I describe them, the platforms, you know, where they say, oh, you know, get, you know, bring in five people and then you move up the ladder, 
you know, and if those five people bring another five people bring. So, so it, it, it's something that we can work with regards voters um, uh, registration. You know, get every person to register 10 people. You know, get 10 of your friends to register 10 of your, or to ensure that 10 of their friends are registered. And if 10 people reach out to 10 people and those 10 people have their own 10 people, it increases the numbers. You know, it's really just the interest. And, you know, having these so, number of people absolutely. wanting to ensure that it is done. So, and that's just an idea I thought about sitting down here now. Right, and I, an idea came to mind, you know, we were doing a consultation, brainstorming session last week, you know, so, and I was involved in the um, eight World Bank HIV Fund in 2012 to 2014. Some of the strategies that we explored, you know, to increase people going in to do their HIV test was, you know, we started, we, we created fun centers where they were, you know, you could win things, right? So we put up gift items like a raffle draw, you know, created music centers where there was music so people can come and dance, just to drag people in. And when you drag people in right now, we now have the opportunity to sensitize to say, okay, if you do this test, you get the raffle draw and the opportunity you could win. You know, we got these items that people donated from clothes to maybe, you know, small earphones to used clothes to sit, to stand out, things like that. And say, okay, if you do your test, so absolutely, you know, and, and that just came into my head. It was one of our partners who brought that up to say, why not let us run that kind of similar model across when we begin this voter registration drive? So I do agree with you, there are a lot of ideas. And I think the more we have these ideas coming to the, come to the table and people begin to implement them, the better for us all. Truly enjoy speaking with you. Okwemi Orino, you're an international development specialist. Thank you for joining us this morning. And um, Thank you. I Thank hope that you. we can put these ideas to work. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we'll go on a short break. When we come back, we're going to uh, Kaduna State, where, of course, uh, four more students of the Bethel Baptist School have been set free. We'll be having a conversation on uh, what more needs to be done and what is the current situation with regards to those still in captivity. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <music>